to the seminar. And uh, uh, yeah, of course, it's a pleasure for me to give a talk here, a long talk here. I think I have given many, many short talks here in the IMW over the last 15 years, which I am in this one. And uh, yeah, as uh, Dima said, I will talk about not the very newest results, basically results which we did mainly with uh, USR, but also with some thermodynamic and transport measurement on uh, multi band superconductors and uh, uh, and or degenerate superconductors at least. So uh, basically, uh, which are basically the materials from some glutamate and potassium doped barium one to two. And uh, it is basically work uh, on mostly related to the phenomenon of time reversal symmetry breaking super. So how do I actually switch? Ah, great. Uh, good. So therefore, my, my outline for this talk basically is uh, that I will just uh, introduce a little bit how we experimentally classify time reversal symmetry breaking superconductivity. So what is that? Um, and basically, then there are different mechanisms which can lead to time reversal symmetry breaking or conductivity. And I will concentrate in this talk then later on mainly on one class of these materials, which are uh, time reversal symmetry breaking superconductors from coherent superposition of order parameters, superconducting order parameters, mostly two uh, order parameters. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> Then I will introduce indeed what we learned on the uh, on this fact on the superconducting state in strontium glutamate uh, based on um, ideas which exist already uh, for at least nearly 10 years now that uh, if there are more than one component in the superconducting order parameter, maybe we can split them by so-called explicit symmetry breaking. And this we will do by for, for example, measurements of mu star and the universe. <coughs> and uh, yeah, if you don't want to stay until the end of that chapter, so basically our main results of that part is that we think really that this 25 year old story is sort of good on it. Our experiment more or less goes very much to a chiral uh, superconducting order part. And uh, then I will talk in the second part on this bio potassium iron based superconductor system. And uh, yeah, this is also a case of coherent two component superposition. But actually, here basically we observe a non chiral time reversal symmetry breaking superconducting state. And I will discuss well, how this is formed in that system and some very relatively new results just two years ago or one and a half years ago is also what I promised in the title already that we talk a little bit about uh, <clears throat> fluctuation induced phases. Uh, basically, fluctuation induced phases just above the superconducting, the different superconducting uh, transition. Okay. And uh, to start with this, I will well, uh, just general advertisement. Uh, if you have some, basically, as we look at a lot of spontaneous switch breaking phases in electronic systems, it's actually very helpful not only on superconductors to combine these experiments with explicit symmetry breaking to learn really what are the components, uh, how the physics works. So I will talk today mainly on this unconventional superconductor strontium glutamate, which has a, an under union stress splitting of the two components of the order parameter. And then, as I said, okay, I will talk a little bit about ion-based superconductors. Uh, basically, I'm uh, going to the phase where we have high doped actually uh, uh, systems and where we have completely lost, we're not talking about magnetism in our case, uh, but just what happens in highly doped superconductors uh, uh, above the superconducting states actually there on this side. Oh, okay. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, all but there actually we will see this uh, fluctuation induced phases, which generally the, uh, for example, the electronic elasticity in the iron based superconductors and are often discussed in terms of vestigial order. The other things is not interesting here. But 
Uh, I will begin this, I mean, I said that in the, I wrote that in the abstract. As a university professor, I like to put the physics, which we discuss in solid state physics, in a broader con context. So I will actually start, start this a little bit. Degenerate states in simple um, Schrodinger's non relativistic quantum mechanics. And this is, of course, known since uh, the 1930s, 1940s. And uh, basically, if I have two symmetry eigenstates of uh, any system, which as a function of some external parameter get uh, energetically degenerated, then if I have some interaction between these states, so some off diagonal element in the describing Hamiltonian, then uh, <clears throat> this will induce basically from the symmetry eigenstates different energy eigenstates. And then we will have a splitting here at this crossing point, one state of the energy eigenstate will go higher in energy and the other lower in energy. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, which may be important is that right at this point, uh, uh, basically, we have in, in this symmetric situation, both of these energy eigenstates are a coherent superposition of the two uh, symmetry eigenstates. And here, this is another example taken from the uh, book from Richard Feynman from 1963, basically ammonium molecule in electric field. And this is an example we use in, we use in the lecture. So again, we have the same thing. We have two symmetry eigenstates of uh, my ammonium molecule. And basically, this are the states where the nitrogen is above the plane of the three hydrogens, or the nitrogen is below the plane of the three hydrogens. And uh, from experimental grounds, these states are different because they have a different direction of the electric dipole moment. Without going into detail. And this dipole moment, of course, you can connect to with an electric field. And then basically you will have first have these degenerate states here. Here's now the energy again as a function now of the electric field plotted. And we have this lifted degeneracy between these two super coherent superposition states at higher energies and at lower energies. There's a certain gap in between, and this you can easily measure an experiment. This is a so-called uh, microwave laser, maser. So that has a frequency here of 24 gigahertz. In the laser, in the microwave laser. And here you can see it's described how, if you apply now an explicit symmetry banking to this system, then you will turn over the energy eigenstates, which are these symmetric mixtures here, into the symmetry eigenstates. For example, here in the situation, the stalker moment up or dipole moment down. So, and uh, this. Well, does happen also in very different systems. And since I mentioned that in my abstract here, I show how this is seen in actually the uh, uh, solar neutrinos, which means electron neutrinos produced in the inner part of the sun. Uh, so basically, if we measure the flux of solar neutrinos at the Earth, uh, it is at higher energies of the neutrinos, reduced with that, with regard to that, what you expect from theory of. The, how they are generated in the, uh, by a nuclear fusion in the center of the sun. So what you see here basically is a similar diagram. Here I have basically as a function of the electron density, which is low here on the left side is where the surface of the sun is. So let's say 700,000 kilometers away from the center of the sun. And here we are in the center of the sun. And in the center of the sun, there is a lot of fusion taking place. So there, there are the electron density and E is large. And due to the fusion processes, only electron neutrinos are generated. There are no muon neutrinos uh, are possible to generate. So here are my electron neutrinos. Uh, and with their energy, of course, in particle physics, they describe it as mass. And for some reason, as a square of the um, rest mass of the particle. And if I take the, can I go back? Uh, if I take this energy, so this is an electron neutrino. Inside the, in the center of the sun, it has a very high energy or mass. And if I go outside, it reduces in energy. And this is due to the fact that the electron neutrino, only the electron neutrino can couple via the W boson weak interaction to the high strong electron density inside. When this finally turns up to this, this is a symmetry, I would say. 
The other symmetry eigenstate of uh, neutrinos are the muon neutrino and the tau neutrinos. So basically, we can describe them both as this line here, maybe for the sake of simplicity here, what is a muon neutrino shown? It doesn't cover. It doesn't cover to the electron density. So the energy of the muon neutrino is constant. If we go from the inner part to the uh, of the sun to the outer part. So and then you see there's a spatial point. So at this point, the symmetry eigenstates of the muon neutrino and the electron neutrino are degenerated. And then we will have what we call the landau zener paneling, when the electron neutrinos with typical energies of a few mega electron volts move from the inner part of the sun to the outer part. They basically go along the adiabatic energy line and they are going from the symmetry eigenstate of the electron neutrino basically along the red line to the symmetry eigenstate of the muon neutrino. So basically, all neutrinos, electron neutrinos, most of them convert to the run, uh, into electron neutrinos, muon neutrinos. And this, apart from other oscillations on the way to the Earth, so there are 150 million kilometers to go from the Sun to the Earth. On this path, there will be lots of oscillations. But nevertheless, this effect reduces the number of muons, electron neutrinos, which we measure on the Earth. So the general state physics here on very high energies, mega electron volts, is, is very important in many in quantum systems of different energy scales. Now let me see. Yeah. yeah. Now let's turn to the real subject. Uh, so uh, time reversal symmetry breaking superconductors. And so in principle, we have about, I guess, several thousand different superconducting materials identified so far as so more or less clean systems, maybe more. I don't know if that's a good guess for that. And uh, about 20 or maybe 30 nowadays show time reversal symmetry breaking superconductivity. So if you think what is time reversal symmetry breaking is a fancy name, it simply means, uh, yes, there are charged currents uh, which under time reversal symmetry breaking they change their direction, and then you see magnetic fields, for example. So this is what we see in some of the systems. For example, in Swanson Ruthenate, I will show in a minute how the MUSR experiment works. Basically, what we look at in different systems here is we look at the muon spin uh, polarization as a function of time, and then this decays. Very slowly, actually, on like six microseconds, there's very little relaxation here. We should look, uh, not do not ignore that basically the zero uh, polarization is suppressed here strongly in this plot. However, if I get into the superconducting state, there is a slight enhancement here uh, of this uh, muon spin relaxation. So, muon is a spin one half probe, a very, very sensitive probe in the material, uh, and it's so therefore, there must be kind of internal field distribution, magnetic field distribution to lead to this input. So and in Swans and Ruthenate, this was observed by Graham Luke and co-workers in 1998. And here is basically the relaxation rate now, uh, um, plotted as a function of temperatures. And you see that here below a certain temperature, 1.4 Kelvin, this starts to increase. So this effect is basically the same what we observed here in a different material. And uh, so it is exactly at TC where this increase starts. So therefore, it must, in, in, most people think it has to do with superconductivity. That's why we call it time reversal symmetry, breaking superconductivity. We have this small effect. And I should already mention here, it is really for muon scientists, it's a small effect. So if we have here something like 0.05 or 0.1 inverse microsecond relaxation rate, so in muons, we could have 100 inverse microsecond relaxation rates in magnets. So this is really a small effect. And uh, so which you can see here, I wrote down this corresponds to internal fields of the order of 0.1 to 1 Gauss. And to measure that, you have to be really very careful to basically um, <coughs> compensate the Earth's magnetic field, which is half a Gauss in the experiment and other things. Anyway, it's not so easy to be done. And later on, Graham Luke, uh, no, earlier already, sorry, he found a similar effect in uranium platinum 3. Here, I just plot again its relaxation rate. Also below here, about 2.49 Kelvin, 
there's an increase of the relaxation rate, also very small increase here. So um, then you can ask if that STC or not, there are actually two temperatures. I will discuss it in the next slide. And this is a not so a little not so long ago measurement we did on sourcing platinum arsenic, also carbon versus smoothie baking superconductor. And again, you see an increase of the relaxation rate right below TC. Okay, now uh, from these 13 from roughly 30 compounds that show this effect, there are several classes. I will now from now on concentrate on the, uh, the cases where we think that it is due to a coherent superposition of uh, two component order parameters. There are other possibilities. You can have a triplet superconductor where the Cooper pairs have a magnetic moment due to finite spin, or we have we have mixture of singlet and triplet central magnetic system, or the newest one are so-called non-symorphic structures, which can give uh, rise to time of symmetry. Making superconductivity, this is a case for lots of them, nickel, thallium, two. I don't know if you can see the two here. There's a reason to experiment. So I will concentrate on this class. Okay, um, it's there are only two methods where you can really see this so far uh, directly these internal fields, the time reversal symmetry making. And the other method is polar care effect. And still, in my opinion, it's not clear if here's a polar care effect. Really proves chirality, or if it only just observes internal magnetic field there. Is, I think over years is ongoing discussion at this point. That's why I put a question mark. And uh, so basically, uh, non chiral yeah, and the respect mark comes from the fact that also non chiral superconducting um, time reverse symmetry making superconductors also give a chiral. So basically, of course, care rotation, you learn the textbooks, you need internal, if you did a ferromagnet, you have a rotation of the polarization angle of reflected light. But here, this was measured by Howard Kapatolik in 2006. And here again, you lower the temperatures and then below TC, you have an increase of the uh, turning, I mean, an angle turning of the polarization of light. However, look at the order of magnitude, it's 10 to the minus nine radians. So it's also a very, very small effect. And nowadays, it's easier to measure, but at that time, you see the scattering. It's also difficult to measure. And here, this is Swanson Wundernate at about 1.4 Kelvin. And for example, in Ulan Green Platinum 3, he could really see that if you compare now the uprise of the care rotation signal uh, and compare this temperature with the TC, then you can see that there's really a difference of something like 0.1 Kelvin between those temperatures already in these early measurements by 2014. And this is due to the fact that really, for example, a uranium platinum 3 that also has different superconducting phases. And obviously, only the so called B phase here in, is uh, time with a symmetry breaking because there's a non time with symmetry breaking superconducting. So the, it's by far not clear that this is the message of that slide. That it has to be a time reverse symmetry breaking superconductivity has to appear right at TC. So, and uh, now, uh, if you really now kind of sit, try, try, try to systemize just these systems, which show these two components superconductors, basically one can uh, <clears throat> kind of divide this up in two different kinds of uh, coherent two components superpositions. I call them the delta one and delta two. You can put in S, P, B, F, whatever you want for data. And uh, so basically, there are some cases where really uh, these two components are uh, begin this degenerate by symmetry. So basically, these are like the symmetry eigenstates of our neutrinos I discussed, or the, the symmetry eigenstates of, um, uh, of the um, ammonium molecule. So basically, that means usually these order parameters, um, if they are degenerate by symmetry, then the absolute value of the order parameters is the same. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then basically only there is a case difference between these two order parameters possible. And, um, and that automatically also means they immediately when they both appear at the same temperature, then immediately due to the so-called chiral uh, order parameter, 
Then we have also the appearance of carbon versus symmetrical. And yeah, on the tetragonal crystal lattice, uh, like strontium glutinate, X and Y directions could be uh, uh, be generated. For example, PXY plus minus IPY would be such a, an example. It was for 20 years considered as a situation in strontium glutinate. But and now at least we favor like a PXZ plus minus IBYZ would just do the same thing. So the X and Y directions are degenerate in the tetragonal system. And uh, yeah, so basically, uh, here you can see uh, basically that just a sketch of these two other parameters. They have the same amplitude, but due to the 90 degree phase shift, basically they have these, these uh, little bit defined this by the complex I here. Uh, this is a kind of cartoon of this coherent superposition. And then in principle, uh, nobody says that you have to take uh, degenerate order parameters. So nature, of course, has the freedom to always take the lowest energy state. It doesn't matter that nature doesn't know which kind of symmetries we describe in physics. So which means uh, you can also apply non-degenerate coherent uh, composite order parameters. So which means, for example, that depending on temperature and other parameters, they have different absolute values. And also they can um, have different uh, angles uh, but in this case, to really get um, kind of a symmetry breaking, they have to, to, the angle cannot be zero or pi. We can you know, kind of reverse the symmetry break. And possibilities, for example, are here. If we, in, in, in any in tetragonal system, if I combine an S and a D uh, order parameter symmetry of the gap function, basically, um, one should not expect. Uh, they, they come from different irreducible representations, so there is actually not to be expected that they have individually the same condensation, uh, D plus IG or whatever. It is. So, and in principle, you can basically have this type of this type of acronym here. Okay, now how can we? How can we now? This, this is both of these cases are discussed for strontium glutinate since twenty years, and I will come in a minute why. Um, and how can we separate? What is the idea now? And the idea of uh, people, uh, many other people before us, but also us, but later, to combine this uh, with explicit symmetry breaking in, in certain ways and see what happens. And the cartoon of the prediction what should happen is if uh, the explicit symmetry breaking in our case is uniaxial uh, pressure or uniaxial stress along an X or Y direction in the tetragonal lattice, for example. And then basically you would expect that you list this degeneracy here between delta one and delta two. And basically you will favor one of the components, for example, delta x is increasing stress in this direction, and you will disfavor the other direction, delta y. And then you will split this uh, transition of two components at the same time at the same temperature into two individual transitions, one at higher temperature and one at lower temperature. So in principle, one would expect that symmetry breaking perturbations of the crystal lattice lift the degeneracy. However, and this I will show also later, if you do a symmetry conserving perturbation, and in our case, it will be hydrostatic pattern, then you will not make the symmetry between X and Y, and we expect that we will basically stay at this point. Let's see how that works on Swanson Gutenberg. Okay, in the case if I have uh, non degenerate composite order parameters, basically, then, uh, for example, here, this is a function of hole doping. Uh, basically, I will tell yeah, later in these ion based superconductors, you have a degeneracy between, as a function of hole doping, between one kind of order parameter, S plus minus, uh, on hole and electron uh, do, uh, Fermi surfaces. At low doping and at high doping, you have an S plus minus between two whole doped uh, states in cavity surface. Uh, and then uh, right at this point where from energy, these two order parameters are degenerate. Again, we can form kind of different coherent superpositions with the idea to lower the energy. However, this condition by no means has to be right at TC because they have usually different. Uh, so the, in the general case, we expect that that we have this time reverse symmetry breaking at lower temperatures than the So um, 
in principle, now how can we separate these two scenarios? Yeah, uh, basically, this is what we call an accidental degeneracy. We have, have to fine tune, for example, the whole doping or whatever uh, to get the degeneracy between the two uh, states on the left and right side. And that basically uh, that means you can easily break this. So if I have, if for some reason, they are degenerate here in two points here, carbon uh, symmetry, versus symmetry breaking NTC can be at the same temperature. Then if I do any kind of modification of the system, I would expect that uh, you lift this so-called accidental degeneracy, not only by whole doping, but also by pressure, by uniaxial pressure, whatever you do, impurities, maybe uh, you should easily break that. However, for in the case, as I said, if I have a, a degenerate order parameter by symmetry, because the two order parameters come from the same irreducible representation, then uh, if I do kind of non-symmetry uh, breaking uh, uh, perturbation data, it should not split. That is the idea of our experiments, which I have shown today. Okay, why is phosphorus mosaic actually so long discussed since 25 years? What is the state? Because this is expected PX plus minus IPY state from the very beginning, which is basically means it is a, a triplet superconductor. There were several inconsistent experiments. For example, from theory, you would predict that also at the surface, um, uh, basically, you will see basically some current. There's a surface current due to the chiral order, which is predicted from theory. And so this is what in this microsquid experiments done by uh, Clifford Hicks uh, 50, nearly 50 years ago. This was the expected signal, but the data really by a factor of 200 or something, it didn't show anything of that anywhere on the surface. So this was already um, <clears throat> the fact that there are no, obviously not really strong uh, surface currents in that state. Uh, and um, also, thermal conductivity points to the fact that there are line nodes. I'm not going into the detail on this Fermi surface, which in the ideal case of a PX plus minus IPY state, there should be no nodes on the Fermi surface. And the same one can see also in physical uh, heat and magnetic fields in different directions. And one picture is missing here, but we don't care. Ah, here it is. So, also, uh, uh, okay, a triplet superconductor. Uh, that can just uh, order its magnetic moment in a magnetic field. Uh, but however, if it is close to HC2, it, uh, uh, basically you will get, go from second first order transition. This points to the fact that you have something like FFLO physics in the, in the system, which actually cannot happen for a triplet superconductor, only for a single one. So there were other indications why this triplet is not optimized. And basically, uh, I mean, the most consistent experiment was actually about well, here. I wrote newer NMR, this is a bit older slide in 2019 already. And so basically, that uh, there is actually a change of nitrogen if I go into the superconducting state, this one's in Boutale. And uh, uh, the, the, these new data by Stuart Brown um, um, group in. Um, <coughs> Los Angeles, they basically show that this is basically high temperature, but if I go into the superconducting state, there is a change of the nitrogen. And uh, that means it, it reduce, uh, the nitrogen is reduced, which points actually also to uh, a singlet superconductor, not as a two And Kenji Ishida, who actually reported this plot, which you find even still in textbooks on superconductivity, now that actually the normalized nitrogen stays constant in terms of Roselet, also reproduced this data a uh, um, little bit later. And also, now he, he sees this reduction going into below TC here or on Kelvin in the side field. And the difference, the problem with these earlier experiments was that in NMR, in a dilution bridge, you have to worry about heating your sample with the, with the pulses. And basically, what you see here is uh, the energy of the pulses and the typical energies. NMR people like we are using to get like a 90 degree rotation of your nuclear uh, spin orientation that well, in this particular setup, it heats up the sample. So basically, even if you were at 0. We thought you were at 0. 0.02 Kelvin, basically due to the heating for a few milliseconds, you were 
pushed out the system into that safety. So that was a problem for ODET. So nevertheless, now uh, Pascal to Ruzanet saying a little bit with this thing. Uh, uh, still, in particular, when we started our experiments, there were many different states suggested from theory. So this is actually now, if we rule out the dx plus minus i of dy to the, to the experiment that I've just shown, so that the only chiral state which is there between two the degenerate on a parameter by symmetry, this is dx e plus minus i dy d state. And uh, there are many accidentally, accidentally degenerate state for ticket which are non chiral So these are on the slide on the right side, two slides before. Okay, so um, and the idea, as I said, uh, they should split under symmetry, symmetry breaking, uh, basically in both situations. But if I have uh, uh, hydrostatic pressure, then this should not, since I don't think the symmetry, there should be no splitting for this state. But most probably there should be, we will also let the accidental degeneracy there. This is the idea. Okay, in this experiment, where it's about more or less a five year, six year, Development maybe for experimental reasons, which I show in a minute, done basically by Vadim Denenko and Srinanda Ghosh, uh, Srinanda Ghosh, and uh, many people, of course, uh, important cooperation with, uh, with the laboratory from USA in Switzerland, not only on the development of the device, but also on doing the measurements and the high pressure measurements, the hydrostatic measurements, measurement measurements are basically done by Rustem, therefore, I don't know if I have his name. Selvitz, uh, Clifford Hicks was very important to develop the cell which we will use and also to analyze the data. And Selvitz also came from Max Planck Institute here on the other side of the road and from Mayano from Kyoto. And uh, well, some uh, probably symmetry analysis uh, from Manfred Siegel's, we got some important uh, contributions. Which is a, ah, uh, so, um, so again, the experiment is we apply new axial pressure along one little zero. We will uh, lift the degeneracy of the lattice and we expect to see two transitions. So, in principle, uh, you could also see, we expect to see that in other methods, for example, in, in specific heat. So, if I have two transitions, you might have a peak in specific heat at the PC, and maybe when the other component comes in, in a similar uh, picture, you would also expect some uh, heat relief in here, and therefore, but this, I should say, has never been seen up to today, even under Unix of Spain. So, how can we see the splitting of the C and T PLSB? You have seen it already, this nuance, we can measure uh, TC, um, um, <coughs> and uh, and measure time reversal symmetry breaking independently. So let's do it. Understand. And here, this, of course, already the uh, Max Planck group uh, from Clifford Hicks, they measured over years already the TCs really uh, goes up very strongly, actually, from 1.5 at zero strain to something like 3.5 Kelvin, which means more, uh, more than doubling the energy scale of the TC. Uh, in a certain uh, distorting the x direction. So let's see about the mirror. Okay, as I said already now, just a very short introduction to mirrors. Basically, with some apparatus, I don't want to describe here, but the we'll actually later I will do it. We matter basically the mirror spin polarization as a function of time. Uh, we need a sample, we have to stop the mirrors, which uh, come with four mega electron volts kinetic energy. So we need something like 100 micrometers or more thickness of the sample. And uh, <clears throat> but as a more important, very important, that this is we have to cancel all kinds of external fields because we really want to see in zero field a nice long uh, uh, constant muon spin polarization. And since we want to measure 0.1 Gauss, uh, we have to be very careful. Basically, in our experiment, we compensated. Dynamically, the fields during the several hour measurements better than to better than 0 0.02 hours. Uh, so, which is very important. Okay, and the, most of the time we needed to develop our apparatus. Uh, here is a sample holder, there is a sample, and to, to get reasonable uh, forces and 
Uniac some pressure uh, on that sample. The sample size is basically determined, predetermined by the beam size. If this is several millimeters diameter here, basically you have to apply forces of about 100 kilograms to a sample, which is over, which is 100 micrometers thick, and do that at uh, temperatures of 0 0.3 Kelvin. So, and then for that, the only possibility at the end was to use uh, the piezo uh, the piezo electric field driven uh, force generator. And so here are four piezos there, and they finally generate the force here on the sand. And that took nearly quite some time to do that. Transparencies, why at all we see any internal fields? I mean, I should say the superconducting order parameter, dx plus ipy or dx e plus minus i dy z, that is, a, and is basically uh, in case space. So basically, this is a certain angle, and uh, you can say inhomogeneity in case space. But the measurement is in real space. So we need real charged currents to make to generate a magnetic field. So, and this is very, so real space gradients. Um, you can get basically just this textbook formula for, for any current uh, of, in, in, in uh, Schrodinger theory. So you have to have gradients of the order parameter, but gradients in real space, not in case space. And how, do, and if you really look at that for the case of time reversal symmetry making, you end up with this formula, which is a little bit longer than that one. And I cannot explain it. However, basically, these gradients of the order parameter in real space can, for example, exist at domain parts. Yeah. So where several years here it's an example for three component superconducting order parameter, it changes its chirality along the domain or, or any defect uh, will of course change the absolute value locally of the order parameter. And then you might we have a gradient in the order parameter, and then you will generate magnetic fields, which we will see in the video. And one can calculate all this magnetic defect by I'm not doing it here. So basically it means defects. And this thing is proven. We can prove that we see defects, basically. And the fact we see it is, if you look at the amplitude of this increase, uh, for example, old measurements here, okay, look, this is from 2000. If you look at this amplitude change, it's 0.02 to 0.04. Uh, in a certain direction, and here it's already just 0.03 increase, here it's 0.02. And other measurements on the same material, sons and butanate, with different qualities, you get increases here, which go like, from 0.02 to 0.08, for example, for this yellow line. So, and basically, the different absolute amplitude of that signal here is simply the different density of impurities in the material which you need to generate the, the, this magnetic field um, which we observe. Okay, and we, now we do a, uh, actually a very systematic study mm -hmm. of that. But here's the first increase. So we have some. Some of an example of this clean one, for example, it's a very, very little increase, 0.01. And if we put some ruthenium vacancies in that material deliberately, we have already changed by 0.02. So you can really do that in a quantitative manner, and manner, and we want to be doing this right now in different kind of local studies. But this is not important now. Okay. Now let's come to the Uniax and strain experiment. So first I will show here the spectra here at zero strain at, and then I go apply a strain and then this red arrow show you where we are up to the so, uh, maximum NGC, which was published by, by Alexander Schepke and Kripper Hicks years before. So here, this is uh, ambient pressure, so no applied pressure. You clearly, see, and we measured here, the time reversal symmetry breaking relaxation rate, that is as a green points. It's the difference between these two measured spectra. And the black curves here is the inverted AC susceptibility, which we measured for. Just to save time, we did the determination of PC with the AC measurement in C. And here you see they start at the same uh, um, temperature. There's a jump in the AC susceptibility and the onset of time versus symmetry breaking. And as soon as we apply some uniaxial pressure, actually you see TC is rising. Just this effect here. But time reversal symmetry break in terms of more or less stays constant. This is not what we expected. We wanted it to go down. But on this blue graph, you see it is more or less constant up to a certain pressure. All right, 
temperature where we have the increase in phase constant, but you see is really increased. It isn't there. So clearly there's a split. Yeah, and then if we go to, so to the Van Hover singularity, so this system, and in this particular direction of strain, there is actually a change of the Fermi surface, uh, and the, the Brion zones from, uh, I mean, the Fermi surfaces of two neighboring Brion zones are coupled, and therefore there's a complex, something, some new physics appears here. And if we go up, uh, beyond the, the strain of high mean, first of all, really go to very high splittings here. Yeah, this is TC and this is time reverse symmetry rating. And even beyond this point, we do see time reverse symmetry. But finally, if we go to very high uh, reaction pressures here, some completely different picture is there. There is a uh, at high temperatures, no relaxation, but then at low temperatures, we see. I'm very sorry, but I'm going to work with this mouse right here. Then we see this uh, oscillations here. These are coherent oscillations of the muon, which means they are well defined internal fields, and these are really magnetic fields, which are 50 times to 100 times stronger than what is there in time of the symmetry. So there is actually magnetic order, but I don't want to focus on that here. Okay. So finally, this was a phase diagram, which we obtained. So, and here is zero uniaxial pressure, and then this applied pressure. Time of symmetry breaking temperature stays constant. It's closed down here at very high, as well, but uh, very end. But the GC is going up, but we clearly see this. So this is an independent. This is just a proof that there are really two components that we can split. Um, I'm not sure this. Yeah, uh, I will now go for time reason. Just if we do hydrostatic pressure, it means we pressure from all sides with the same force. Uh, that means we do not change the symmetry, and it is already known that TC goes down by applying pressure for quite some time and it's something worth it. Let's do what the time reverse symmetry mechanism. And I just here to show the final result. This is an odd plot. This is the super parameter of TC. We are focusing on the red sample. This is zero pressure. Now apply pressure, TC goes down. And what we measured, I'm just showing, I'm showing it here. Also, the PPR, the time of proximity that goes down. And they are always at this 45 degree line is where they are identical. So basically, if we do hydrostatic pressure, sorry, indeed, we can change both uh, temperatures by about 50%. <clears throat> but still, they go parallel. So they stay on this 45 degree. So just for the sake of, sake of it, here these are our uniacs of pressure experiments. You see is increasing. And so we are getting far away from the Also, you can look at all these doped samples where we uh, basically put impurities in the system. They also don't change the symmetry. You have basically, if you do not do too much doping, you get basically just local impurities in the material, not breaking the, the tenor of symmetry. And at least uh, some one point, and I think now we have some more, you reduce TC and also have the to be back in the start. So all our kind of doping studies, uh, also purity studies, are also. Yeah. So, and that means clearly this, at least the comparison of these effects, really means uh, that we have a, a, a spicimetry degenerated state. So we can put, reduce TC. The, the, the symmetric way, and both components change their energy scale. This is what at least I do not expect from uh, the, 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 from an accident. Okay. Um, yeah. Now I will uh, basically focus and tell a little bit about this one, one material where you do have uh, accident and then we'll see how we what we observe there, and this is basically this part. Okay, this is this is actually a project which was started by Vadim when he came uh, into our group about six or seven years ago. And uh, so he is very important uh, on this. Uh, then the single crystals in this case, uh, it's it's very difficult to make good high quality single crystals of potassium dope one to two. And uh, so from Chulboli, basically these crystals were made. A lot of additional measurements were done over the years. Also here at 
uh, um, and, 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 and later I will also show thermoelectric transport measurements from here in the institute. Uh, and the theory here, uh, this is actually where we will see at some point at the end that there is uh, this vestigial order, uh, a new form of a metallic state above the sea. And this is uh, which we have discussed in detail as yes, the theory side of the field of the field of our Okay. We are interested in one or two. Many, most of you, you, know, you know this material for more than 10 years. And, and for many years, people were interested in the competition of spin density wave, magnetic order, and superconductivity here. We are now working here at this Lilschitz transition, a change of the fabric surface that's very high doping. This potassium system has the advantage of being a gold, or it's with the doping from the And uh, basically, what happens, the Lilschitz transition, if I go to very from whole doping, this electron family surface at the, at the so called gamma band at the end point that uh, when, the, uh, the, either this goes above the family surface or you lower the family energy and basically we lose a band. So basically, there is a transition uh, where you really go lose, lose basically the bands, one band here at the end points the, in the reciprocal. Um, no. So, and what from theory can happen? So, basically, at low, lower doping, I have three bands. All of them can contribute to superconductivity, and they can have certain amplitudes of the order parameter and certain relative angles. And if I call this uh, S plus minus for the three bands, basically, two of these order parameters are parallel, and the other one is anti parallel. So, if I lose one of the bands, I kept only two of them. They still have an S plus minus superconducting order at high doping, but with one band less. Nothing special. No, no time about three days. However, if I'm very close to the lifted transition, for some time, I mean, here in this cartoon, we lose the blue band. So, uh, and basically, there is a situation where basically some you use the coupling to the blue band, but and finally, this red. So the green and the black band has to go from parallel orientation to anti parallel orientation. So you might end up in a certain regime where you have three bands, and this has chirality now, because here uh, there is a different phase shift in the plot pi or the. Yeah, so but this was proposed by theory, and this is what Wadding proposed to look at. And finally, he found that, and here you see it. We are here, actually, this is a phase like I'm only at high doping. Uh, here is a lifted transition about approximately at 0.6 type doping with potassium. And if we are going to 0.75 or 0.8, uh, uh, at 0.78, for we see a very tiny increase here of the selectivity rate. And other samples on the left side, they don't. So basically, we see this uh, uh, handle versus symmetry making clearly due to the frustrated degeneracy of one order parameter from the left side and one order parameter from the right side. And then the story, the third story is over, but the closer we look at it, you see this point here, I, I didn't believe it, it is, that this year, this time of the symmetry breaking transition is somehow above the C. Yeah? So this is uh, individual PC measurements here done by other methods. So of course, then you say, well, 0.1 Kelvin, 0.2 Kelvin, different machines, different experimentalists will immediately say, don't believe in it. So Wadim tried to convince us. And indeed, uh, there is something which can happen. And that is, uh, if you really look at the strange TC dependency of this doping, there is, at the beyond the ellipsoid transition, there is a stronger suppression of the TC. However, the reason is not clear. And thanks due to thermal transport measurements from Henry's nerds here in this institute, basically we can say that these fluctuations already appear still at a higher temperature. So there is a phase space yeah, where you have enhanced superconducting fluctuations. Okay. And uh, so, and this were then the measurements actually, then we put back to our USR data. And here, what is, turns out to be very important is that the time reverse symmetry rating seems to have a maximum here. And then the TC of the material where we see, for example, in a C is lower. It's clearly lower than when we have the onset of time reverse symmetry. 
And uh, now we have measured that on several samples, it's still there. And uh, this here is on the spontaneous snare. So in the general field, the thermal and so that's temperature gradient. So basically, also here you see actually a peak. I'm not learning here. I'm a hot motoric person in German. Uh, so here on, there is a peak in this spontaneous uh, neurons, at least which can, one can interpret as, for example, fluctuation of superconducting order parameters, flux and open things are possible. However, it's exactly in this range yeah? and at certain uh, content concentrations. Now, let me, you have to look, look at that at, le uh, at least with thermodynamic and uh, and this uh, transport methods more clearly. For example, in specific heat, you are basically the upper view graph is specific heat. Now, as a function of different fields, going from zero field to up to nine Tesla, electric resistivity in different fields and spontaneous nerve signal. And of course, in uh, spontaneous nerves at zero fields, turns to kind of uh, symmetric nerves effect in measurements in finite fields. But still, uh, the one can see there is there's always the PC line, and there's this onset of these fluctuations or the onset of yeah, redu reducement of electrical resistivity here. Also, here is in the longitudinal uh, heat transport, the Zebra effect is here. And also, if you see that here, at least the peak in uh, specific heat is broad. I don't want to say there is a second peak here, but at least there is some broadening. And uh, uh, and you can see that this stays there for a higher PLC. And finally, uh, okay, this is interpreted as two different phases. I mean, if I have some anomaly in specific heat, there must be some sort of symmetry rating. And so the interpretation of all of these measurements, not only on this sample, It's like this. This is finally now for one sample, the phase diagram as part of temperature and magnetic field. And we can clearly measure TC, how it is suppressed this magnetic field. We can see this onset of the nerve fluctuations. Uh, uh, yeah. And if you really look at uh, in transport measurements and also in specific heat, that fluctuations already occur at higher temperatures. But these are all these effects are kind of suppressed with field. But clearly, it's not a, a kind of uh, ambiguous effect. So, and basically, that is basically the theory now says yes, here in this particular range, where the names shows, okay, uh, here I have a new state. We are not superconducting, but uh, from this cooperation with uh, Igor Baba and looking at all these work later, we think that basically, uh, uh, yeah, there is a new state, and it has to be related with uh, these three band uh, kind of uh, uh, frustrated uh, degeneracy. So, basically, of course, here in the, at low temperatures, we have the superconducting state, we have long range ordering of phase and amplitude of the uh, three bands. Uh, and at high phases, of course, it is. This order phase, which is also there in every superconductor, basically you can think about you having between the, the locally different phase correlations between spontaneous uh, in some areas in the material, and but the phase correlations are not here. However, uh, in this phase of the theory, this is kind of fluctuation induced uh, situation where the chirality of these. Order parameters is already fixed. Here there is no very fine causality of this order parameters, is fluctuating order parameters, but here there is. And this is why it's called the P2 transition. And basically, so we have domains which could have a right causality or left causality. This is what we propose to explain this stage. And this needs further work. And now I'm already 10 minutes over time. I'm sorry for that. And uh, I leave that out for discussion. I mean, uh, it is still not one possibility to explain it. And yeah, now I come to the summary. Uh, I 
At least I uh, kind of hope I convinced you that there are coherent superparametric states, multiple by two components, all the parameters, and then on circle rotor At least our experiments quite very much to a chiral uh, state by two uh, degenerate, by symmetry degenerate components, whereas the bio of the path will be given to non chiral family was a symmetry basis. Yeah. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.